What's up you guys, Sam here with a new video today and I'm here to bring you guys my updated uh, Totally Minerva deck profile. Uh, I've been using this deck since the regional flight, you guys saw the deck profile and I've just been slaughtering locals like left and right. This deck has been unreal. Like, it's just been, like, a lot of just, like, crazy games, a lot of, like, effortless games because of how good the deck was. I knew it was good against the meta, but I never really knew, like, across the span of, like, all the meta how good this deck was. And I'm profiling it. I actually played at Core TCG in Pasadena. I haven't played in there in months. I played there on Tuesday. Uh, for the last time, I'm moving out of Southern California, moving back up to Northern California, for those of you who didn't know. And I played one last time, ended up winning the entire thing. I went undefeated. Um, and got first place, uh, so it was awesome. I just wanted to show you guys the deck. A lot of you were asking for an updated list. I didn't even change the main deck, you guys. The main deck is the exact same 42 cards it was. The extra deck is the only thing that changed, but it changed for the better. And when I get to it, I'll explain why it changed. And the side deck changed, uh, I think, like one or two cards, so that's it. So I'll get into it. <clears throat> I hope you guys like it. Um, I'm not going to explain anything that doesn't really need any explanation, so it's pretty basic stuff. So we'll start. I have it kind of broken up into the engines, but the Lightsworn engine, we got, of course, three Raiden, three Wolf, and two Lila. That's it for Lightsworns. We keep it a low Lightsworn count. Minerva's really good in the deck, obviously. It's like everyone thinks it's the main card of the deck, but it's not. Snow is. Uh, with eight Lightsworns, you're not always going to hit cards off Minerva. You have Charge, Solar Recharge, so you usually don't have your Lightsworns, but you have access to them when you need them. This combos with Gigabyte. This is the only one you want to mill or if you draw it with solar recharge and this you want to search uh, as soon as possible because you can either mill for or synchro with it so it comes up a lot but that's it for our lights horn engine uh, I wouldn't add any other lights horns the only one I, I thought about adding was Aaron but I'm still back and forth with it uh, so that's it for the lights horn engine for the water package to support the Bahamut and totally awesome of course it's three tin goldfish three gigabyte and two chocolate magician girl this engine is perfect I absolutely love it most people don't know what gigabyte and chocolate magician girl even are most people don't even know the gigabytes a card so when you tell them my favorite line like the entire time I'm playing this deck is since I control a spellcaster I'm gonna special summon gigabyte they're like what like they don't know what's going on um gigabyte if you control a spellcaster we have plenty of them in the deck you special it it's a level four it's a water it works for bahamut it works for any of our rank fours that's what we <coughs> that's what we do magician girl discard a spellcaster draw a card if it were to be attacked you can uh special summon a spellcaster from your graveyard make that monster attack that one have its attack really good card this water package is perfect i wouldn't change it i really really like it um and then of course the best card in the deck i I don't need to explain this, but I feel like people need to know the reason why this deck is good is because Fairy Tale Snow exists. This card is incredible. This card will win you every single game. So many people don't know what this card does. It gets you out of situations where you just can't even come back. I was playing against Mermails, and everyone knows I hate Mermails. I always lose to them. In game three, I he literally he summons Prince. I go to activate Snow. He goes Chalice. I chain Tree Toad. He goes second Chalice. I chain Book of Eclipse. It was just insane. Like without Snow, you don't really have a prayer against a lot of these decks. Like you need to be able to book moon problematic monsters asap i can't tell you how many games it'll win you against abc you play the game of they special thrasher they summon a guy you fairy tale snow it they end their turn so this card is just incredible without this card i feel the deck would not be as good as it is uh, then just some other cards starter cards photon thrasher self-explanatory we only play two because we play the phantom knights of shade brigadine as the trap uh, two trick clowns just a good card in general and then two maxi i feel this is an absolute must uh, in this format where decks are special summoning every single turn so that's it for the monsters exactly the same 25 uh, for the spells three pot of desires card says draw two Three copies of Instant Fusion, one of the best cards in the deck. We want to get our Norden, our Bahamut plays going. It also just helps us make more rank fours. If we recycle the Norden with uh, Tree Toad or we recycle it with Emerald, it's live again. Uh, three recharge, two charge, basic Light Sworn stuff. Still with the two Twin Twisters, this was, like I said, it was the 41st and 2nd card. I'm, I'm glad I kept this card in. This card comes in so handy against so many decks. Being able to Twin Twister just at the right time, being able to Twin Twister when you're starting your turn is just a great feeling. You clear the back row and you just win because they have no response to your plays. And then the one of Soul Charge, Rota, Foolish, that's it for the spells. And then the one trap is the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine, another card most people had to read. They don't know what it does. You set it, activate it, it's like a Photon Thrasher. It's great, I love it. Uh, so that's it for the main deck, you guys. It is the exact same uh, 42 cards. So far, I would not change it. I really like it. 
People say I should play Brilliant Fusion. I don't really like Brilliant Fusion in this build because I feel like the deck does enough on its own that you don't need the Brilliant Engine. And you would have to play cards like the Little Minerva to support the Seraph Knight because then it would have to, you would need to synchro with it or Seraph Knight just kind of sits there. You have to banish it for snow. So not something I wanted to do. Uh, I'll go to the side deck next. Uh, side deck, uh, I think it's like one or two cards off from uh, Anaheim, but uh, two Denko Seca for uh, back row decks for Paleozoics. Really good card. I played against... Uh, one of my friends, and I was able to win game three against Paleozoics by summoning Denko. This card's good. You guys saw Billy win the finals with it. Two Gamma Seal. I still really like Gamma Seal. It's just good against, like, Blue Eyes and any deck that puts problematic monsters on the board. It gets you out of situations. I had one game where I opened with two of them, and I tributed one for him, specialed one to my side, and it was pretty cool. It, you know, it just it got me out of problematic situations. Uh, one Raigeki, one the last Twin Twister, Board Wipe, and... Uh, just for back row decks, Paleozoics mostly. System Downs for ABC. Book of Eclipse, just an incredible card. I used it to win against Mermails in round three because, uh, like I said, it was that crazy interaction where he goes summon Prince. I go, okay, snow it cause you, because he would have to activate the effect. I'm like, okay, snow it before you activate effect. He goes Chalice. I go Toad. He goes... He goes Chalice again, I go Book of Eclipse. So this card single-handedly won me that game. The card's in just incredible. Uh, I upped it to two D barriers this time. I only side this one going first. I like it against uh, Metal Foes, and I like it against ABCs. Also, the Mirror Match when it comes up, because there are people that do play the Minerva deck even without Minerva. They play with Utopia. You use it just to call XYZs in that situation. Or against... I use this against... Uh, I played a, a crazy like Yang Zing Speedroid deck uh, round two, and I won game three because I, I flipped this and called synchros and he couldn't play so this card was actually really good it's a little bit better than i thought because i was starting to have my doubts about this card but uh it impressed me this time and then just three anti-spell fragrance for uh blue eyes if going first and against pendulums of course so as for the side deck pretty self-explanatory on to the extra deck of course the bay one minerva now, something people need to understand, this card is essential for the deck, obviously. However, a lot of people feel that this is what the deck's all about, and it's not. The deck is not even really a Lightshorn deck when you only play, like, eight Lightshorns. But the thing is, is that this is an acceleration card that gets you to snow, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to fill your graveyard to fuel snow, because that's one of the best cards in the deck. This card does that. Sometimes you'll get lucky and draw cards. Its second effect is more relevant, because you want to hit cards to get problematic cards off the board. So, it is absolutely necessary, but... Uh, uh, people need to stop thinking that this is what the deck is all about because it's definitely essential, but it's not the main centerpiece of the deck. Uh, one Norden. Norden's probably the most important extra deck monster because Instant Fusion is like one of the best cards. Being able to make the Bahamut and Tree Toad is just insane. Uh, for Synchros, two Omega. I'm thinking about cutting one. I haven't cut it yet, but I feel like I need Scarlet, Red Dragon, Archfiend. There's so many games where it could have came up, and I, it's very rare you'll get two Omegas unless like you open, you know, like Instant Fusion, Raiden, all that. If you, this is what you're trying to do, I feel like this alongside a Tree Toad is better, and I feel like a Scarlet could just come up because the only way I've ever made two Omegas is if I drew Soul Charge. So. There's an option there. Here's the MVP, though. This card, since Dragon Ruler format, this card, Crimson Blader, is just absolutely incredible. I can't even tell you guys how good this card is. I used it to beat Mermails, and I used it to win in the finals against ABC. We got into time. He was turn zero on turn one. I drew. I summoned another four. Raiden was on the board. He flips Dimensional Bearer, calls Synchros. I mean, he calls uh, XYZs, and I Synchro for Crimson Blader, run over his monster, and he can't make Buster Dragon. So that card single-handedly won me the game. I play it mostly to, to uh, <clears throat> kind of lock ABCs out of playing with a Snow Engrave and a Crimson Blader on board. There's no XYZ they can summon that's going to activate upon summon because we don't have Excite on night. So if you Crimson Blader them, all they can do is XYZ. You just Snow one of their guys and their turn pretty much ends or you Snow what the monster they bring out and their turn ends. So this card was incredible. I definitely would not cut it. It's really, really good. Uh, the All-Star Package, one Bahamut, one Tree Toad, self-explanatory. Really, really good. Totally awesome. Uh, the Utopia package for when it comes up, it does come up quite a lot. And then just generic fours, one Emerald, one Castell, one Dweller, one Rhapsody, incredible card. One Trapeze, which won me multiple games because of the OTK potential. And one King of the Feral Imps to search Gigabyte. So that is it, you guys. That is my updated, if you want to say, Minerva Tree Toad, totally Minerva deck. It's, um, you know, it's pretty much, it's exactly the same. I just really like this deck. Um, I feel like this deck has really made me enjoy the game so much because I feel this deck can go against anything. Hardest matchup is Metal Foes, hands down. It's very hard to play against Metal Foes. It just is. I don't know why. 
It just is. You lose a lot to Max C2, so you have to know when to stop with the Max C challenge. Uh, I just feel that this build is just really, really optimal against so many decks this format, and I just really enjoy the fact that I can play Light Sworn. I've always been a Light Sworn fan, and that I can have success with it. So I know it's only locals, but you know we're gonna take it to YCS's regionals and just try to have more success there. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and thank you for watching.